Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're excited to be back at home uh, this week after on the road the last couple of weeks. Uh, and, um, you know, we're going to have another tough opponent with uh, West Virginia. Uh, like we talked in the locker room after a tough loss on, uh, on Saturday, just no different than after a win against uh, OU or, or KU. Got to wipe it clean pretty quickly, and you got to go back to work. And uh, we had a really good practice yesterday, uh, good focus, good energy. Um, I was pleased we, we really came out of uh, the Texas game relatively healthy. Um, we only had one guy, uh, Joaquin, that would be questionable um, for for this game. So that, that's a real positive sign. So, um, But we have to go back to work and, and have to continue to, to get better, continue to improve. I thought Texas did a really good job uh, shutting down our, our rushing attack and, and something that we have to get back going to uh, set up everything we need to in the passing game. So guys are excited to be back playing at home and, and look forward to a, a great uh, great afternoon uh, here in Manhattan. So exactly how hungry is this offense? I know that running run the ball is the key that turns the ignition. How hungry is this offense uh, going forward with, with the rushing game? Yeah, I, we have to be better. Uh, and you got to give Texas credit because they really blitzed us an awful lot and run a lot of line stunts. And um, at times we picked them up well, and at times uh, we didn't. They just had us outnumbered at the point of attack. So I know that, uh, you know, just a as a whole, um, you know, offensive line, tight ends, fullbacks, and, and our backs are excited to um, get back at home and, and see. Because you're right, we have to be able to rush the football because it sets up everything that we do. And when you mentioned Injuries is is James and Joe where they have no yeah, Joe will be available for sure because Joe Joe's was a concussion and he's cleared uh, for sure. Um, James it, did move around yesterday. It's an ankle that's just not responding as as well as we would have hoped. Um, Jordan nicked his up again uh, in the game on Saturday, so both both those two practiced yesterday. Uh, now granted, it was a light workout. Today and tomorrow will be a lot heavier workouts, and and they're both cleared to go so we just need to see how they practice as well as how they respond you guys are on pace to finish top 10 all time in case of history and rushing yardage what does it say that at a time when you have been dealing with injuries over the past few weeks that you're able to continue well, I credit uh, a lot of the things offensively with mess play calling in the offensive line and tight ends and fullbacks, as well as we knew when we when we arrived here that there, it was really thin at the running back position, and so uh, we were able to go out and, and bring some guys in. Uh, Harry Trotter, uh, who had walked on as, as, and earned a scholarship, and same with Tyler Burns, have done some really good things. Our, our depth there uh, has been a big bonus for us. The thing that obviously you can tell where it hurts us is when we're really clicking, rushing the football, we can line up in our three running back set, and we just have not been able to do that because of our injuries. Coach, in a time where in sports it's, it's really all about wins and losses, and that's all we talk about, the kind of respect in which you talk about being process-driven, mm -hmm. results-driven. What I'm curious is at any point in your career, did you ever get any pushback from fans or media or another coach about – you know about that? No, um, I, and I really don't care <laughs> if I if I did because that's it's still what I believe in and what the program believes in and what our staff believes in, uh, and ultimately, and I and I said this to the players yesterday. Um, you know, everybody wants to win and and everybody uh, is disappointed when you lose. But if the only thing they did is to come to Kansas State or wherever other school and play football and get a degree, boy, I failed them. There, there's so many things out there. Um, you know, and, and it give you a great example. We had Michael Bishop come and talk to the, the team on Friday night. Really cool experience for those guys uh, that had heard an awful lot about uh, Michael. Uh, Ryan Young did our chapel service on, on Saturday, another former player, uh, and a uh, real inspiring message. You know, those are the things that I want to make sure guys get out of this as well. And so, uh, and that, in my opinion, that's still all a part of the process uh, of, of battling for one another uh, so that when you, when times are tough, I don't know where it's it's on the football field or in life, you can you you have the tools to get through the adversity. And, and uh, I've been really pleased to see, you know, I, I didn't know what kind of practice we'd have yesterday. Um, there's some guys still.
little uh, upset, get a little disappointed we didn't win, but it was, hey, we have an opportunity to play at home again. And these seniors got two chances left, two opportunities is all to play at home. So we have to have a great week of preparation, and that's that process, great week of preparation to give us a chance on Saturday. The, uh, the Cats logo is old for some people, new for some other yeah. people. Can you just tell us how you settle on that one? You like it? Um, well, a couple things. One, it, we're, we're celebrating the 150th, 50th year of college football uh, throughout the season, and, and um, one of our ways to do it here is just for this game to do a throwback and, and uh, wear the, uh, the cats on the helmet. It's uh, something that uh, I think had been planned for a little while, and uh, I was on board and said, you know, it's not something we're going to do um, and keep the logo. We're just doing it for this game, and uh, something that uh, I think – Everything in recruiting and stuff is needs to be fresh with guys. And, and uh, so we had said we were going to alter a couple things this year. We did one earlier in the season, and this was uh, another opportunity for us to do it. And, and I know that they're uh, honoring Coach Snyder uh, during the game, which I think is awesome. Uh, once again, celebrating 150 years of college football. And, and Bill was a huge, huge part uh, of college football in general, not, not just at Kansas State. We know what he did here, but uh, I know how much he's impacted so many coaches across the landscape of college football so uh, I think it's uh, just going to be a great weekend. you got a number of freshmen who are around on that four game uh, fence. Yeah. Do you know for sure any that you will keep playing or won't? Uh, well I think the, the two that we have that I can think of are Khalid and Joe uh, Urban that, that are right on that in it, our plan is to play those guys right now. Um, some of it is they're they're ready, and we still have um, four more games. So I, I think that would be quality for those guys. And um, the other thing is injuries too. You know, we, we are still beat up at the running back position, and so we can't just say, okay, we're not going to play a guy. We've got to help. We've got to help the 2019 Wildcat team win as many games as we can. I owe that to those seniors. A follow up just on the, the process approach that you have, the process oriented approach. Is that something you've always <clears> had <throat> as a coach, or what was it that really put in the uh, developed over time, uh, and uh, a lot of that is a credit to Ben Newman, who's been a part of uh, our program since I arrived here, but was with me uh, at North Dakota State. And, and uh, I, I'm a big believer in uh, not being simply a results-based person, organization, company, football team, whatever it is, but uh, enjoying the journey, enjoying the process, because um, it's a grind. Everybody knows it is, from coaches to players. This is a grind of, of of a season and you play, you know, you get 12 opportunities and look how much time you practice and, and you prepare and you, you better enjoy that process. You better enjoy that journey as well as these guys are going to remember, especially these seniors, they're going to remember their senior year the rest of their life. And uh, it's so fun for those guys to have great memories of, you know, locker room celebrations, on field celebrations, what they did um, on a road trip, all those things. And that's still just a part of the process of, of continuing to get better in, uh, uh, and right now, I really believe as a football team, we're getting better. We saw Malik make a play in the open field on Saturday. It looked similar to the TCU play where he wasn't really able to cut. Just how, how much healthier is he now? Uh, he's probably 85%, to be honest with you. Um, you know, he's had a, a number of small things that have been nagging and uh, I was pleased that uh, he made a great play. I mean, he made the kid miss and took it to the house and that's something that's been missing that, that he can do for us. And uh, and then I know he was sore um, Saturday or Sunday and, and Monday and, and we'll, we need to be smart with Malik throughout the week to see uh, if we can get his legs back underneath him because he's a difference maker. I, I, I don't envision Malik uh, missing any time, but um, to answer your question, I don't think he's 100%. What do you see from West Virginia offensively? Uh, tremendous skill. Uh, get the ball on, on the perimeter really fast. Uh, that's what I see as my biggest concern is they have great skill players, wide receiver, running back position, and they get the ball to them in space and create one-on-one -on -one opportunities uh, that we have to do a great job of not making it only a one-on-one -on -one opportunity that we have enough um, hats to the football that we can uh, do a great job of tackling and keeping the cup. But uh, uh, I think they're really an explosive offense with, with tremendous skill kids. And defensively, what's kind of gone wrong for them? 
Uh, they've been kind of bitten by the big play, you know, and, and everybody in college football worries about getting beat by the big play, and, and we've had our share of big plays against us, and um, we've we've limited some of those, which has obviously helped us in the overall scheme of things, but uh, uh, I think that's probably their biggest thing that they've had hurt them is, is the big play and getting down quickly in a couple of games, and uh, that's why, you know, I, I caution the guys again, you can't compare scores, you can't worry about what was done last week compared to what's going to be done this week. It's it's all in your preparation slash process. process. It gives you an opportunity, and um, you guys probably know better than I do uh, because you've you've seen it. But West Virginia has had some success against Kansas State in the last few years. I don't think I saw Sammy Wheeler last week. What's his step? Yeah, he tore his ACL against KU on a non-contact injury uh, late in the. Uh, and maybe first, first, late in the first half, just uh, unfortunate, really sad and sick for Sammy because he was coming on and, and really playing good football for us. But uh, one of those freak things that, uh, that that you see, he just planted and his knee gave way, and I, I, he has not had surgery yet, so obviously he'll miss spring ball as well. And uh, the kickoff returns has helped you guys out big in two games. Uh, can you just walk us through how you've been able to improve in that area this season? We, well, we spend a lot of time on it. Uh, Coach Anderson has that with a lot of other coaches. And again, we have a lot of coaches involved helping us, and we spend a lot of uh, Mondays. We spend a lot of time on drill work with special teams on, on all special teams, and then uh, Tuesday we focus on a couple. Wednesday we focus on a couple, doing more team-related things, and then on Thursday uh, we kind of clean all the operation up. But uh, uh, I credit our front line is doing a really good job of, of maintaining some blocks, and then uh, I. Think I thought Josh did a really good job uh, of running through an arm tackle at about the 15 or 18, similar to what Malik did down in Mississippi State of running through an arm tackle, uh, you know, where it could have been a tackle at the 20 and ran through it. And then uh, um, we're holding blocks, uh, a number of guys. And there's a lot of players uh, on that KOR that are also on punt, punt defense, uh, kickoff that uh, play an awful lot of pivotal snaps for us. And, you know, I take it like Ross Elder does does things great all the time on special teams. Brock Monty does things tremendously all the time on special teams. The guy that made a huge block on that uh, was Harry Trotter, who happened to be um, our, our starting tailback the last two, week, two weeks, made a great block. So uh, excited. And, and for us to be successful, we have to continue to be good on teams. After having a chance to watch the film, how well did you think the CBs, the DBs, held up without uh, A.J. Parker? Um, well, it, it is what it is. We were not going to have AJ for a while, so I, I thought they did. I thought they did a really good job against unbelievably talented guys, and, and that's the the thing that we have to have a, f a good balance of is when we're going to leave them on an island and play man coverage, um, and, and when we're going to give them help. But uh, you know, when when the wide receivers are six foot six and two hundred thirty pounds, and we're five nine and a Buck 75, those are tough battles to win. And uh, I thought we competed really well. And, uh, you know, all that being said, we had an opportunity to have a chance to win, and we held them to whatever, 20, 24, 27 points. That uh, um, I, I thought they did a, a tremendous job. Walt uh, made a big time pick to get us out of a series. Uh, that was really good. Kiwi made a couple of really nice plays. Um, but if you're going to play, Man to man, like we want to play some man to man. You're going to give up some some plays, and and uh, we we just we know that, and we have to understand that. You brought up Joaquin, the the play where he got hurt. Just what was your reaction to seeing that hit? You know, I saw it on on the replay, and I was I. I, I brought the officials over because I wanted them to look at it. I don't know if it was going to be looked at because there was no flag. And so I asked him to look at it, and he was great. said, yeah, coach, we'll, we'll go upstairs and take a look at it. And uh, it's unfortunate because um, uh, it was away from the play, didn't have anything to do with the play, and uh, Joaquin's going to probably miss a game. And you have a hit like that and someone only misses a half. I don't think that's very fair. You obviously had a lot of confidence in Blake Seiler as a coach, keeping him on yeah. when he initially got here. What, what are your thoughts about preparing against him now? 
Well, he knows an awful lot about the personnel. I don't know if he knows the schemes because he left before we got talking about offense and defensive schemes. But I uh, have great respect for, for Blake. Um, you know, was around him for a solid month, went on the road with him. Uh, tremendous coach, tremendous recruiter. Uh, he'll be a factor simply because he knows you know, offensively and defensively our personnel so well. But uh, um, it was an opportunity for him in the profession uh, to continue to grow. And uh, he and I visited about it when he did leave. And that's the one thing that I'll, I'll never prevent somebody from growing in the profession. Uh, it's what allowed me to be where I'm at today is by taking chances and growing in the profession. And that's what we all want to do is, is, to, is to aspire to you know, be head coaches, be coordinators. And sometimes you have to take a leap of faith um, and, and do something different. And he's a K-State guy. And I know that that's not easy, but I, I'm a big fan of Blake um, and uh, hope to get a chance to spend a few minutes with him. Chris, you, your defense has done a great job uh, holding teams under their season average and scoring this season. Um, what's been the key to the success in that department? Uh, the guys are buying in and learning more and more each, each week for starters. Uh, on the defensive side, we're, we're improving with the knowledge base of, of, our, of our bread and butter based defense. And so we're able to maybe make more adjustments each week as opposed to early in the, early in the season. It was like, here's what we're doing, guys. And we got we to gotta be able to live through some of the issues. Now when an issue comes up, our guys come to the sideline or at practice, work through it, and it makes sense to them because they know... Early on, they just knew what their job was. But great defenses know where their piece is at, know where somebody else's piece is at, and, and it all fits together. And we're getting better at that. And are we there yet? Not even close. Um, but for our first year in the system, especially as, as complex as some of the things that, that Hayes uh, does, I, I, I'm really excited about uh, where we're going. You kind of look, you look at the good, you look at the bad. West Virginia really has had trouble scoring inside the red zone. K-State's the only team in the country that hasn't prevented a, a team from scoring inside mm -hmm. the red zone 100% of the time. But half those trips have resulted in field goals. How would you assess the red zone defense this year? Really, really good, and it's a win. If you, I'm a big believer. If you can hold people to field goals, you have an opportunity to win games because offenses are really good uh, across the landscape of college football. And and you can look at the Oklahoma win, and they're in there a few times and have to kick field goals, and, and very few people prevent uh, teams like that from getting touchdowns. And I think it's a big momentum swing when you are um, able to to prevent people from scoring touchdowns and kicking field goals. And uh, in this day and age of college football, uh, it's points, points, points. And so I've been really pleased with uh, the red zone defense we're playing. Uh, after nine games, do you believe that you achieved your personal goals in your first season? I didn't really have any personal goals. Um, good question, but I didn't really have any personal goals. I think it was just to continue to grow every week. We knew there would be some really good highs. Honestly, I knew there would be some difficult times. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I guess I'd give myself a better self-evaluation at the end of the whole season, you know, after you know, the regular season and even after the bowl game, just because, uh, you know, you don't get a chance to really reflect very much other than the two bye weeks, which came so early, and now we've been in a grind like of all grinds uh, in November, uh, that you don't really get a chance to reflect back. But uh, um, I, I know I will, but we'll do it collectively. It won't be personally. It will be collectively as a staff. What what we what we accomplished, what we failed to accomplish, because we're still in that boat too, where we're still trying to find a way to click on all cylinders. And so at the end of at the end of the whole thing with the after the bowl game stuff, we'll definitely get a chance to reflect on it. Uh, speaking of bowl eligibility, have you been preparing for that postseason game, or are you focusing more on just the uh, just focusing on the conference. Uh, I know that, and the guys know that there's uh, a great things we're going to be playing uh, over, over the holidays. Um, but having once again with the grind we're into November, you guys, you guys tell me, tell me the last time a team's played five games in November in a regular season. 
you know, I, I don't know if it's ever been I, just how the calendar lays. I'm sure it has somewhere. First time for me, first time I talked to Sean, he can't remember the last time that K-State played five games in November. Uh, when you're in that kind of a grind, that's the only thing that's on your mind right now because you get through uh, playing a game on Saturday in in Austin. By the time you get home, it's 10, 11 o'clock. I'm back up here early in the morning on Sunday, and it's look at that tape and we'll go right on to West Virginia, and that's going to be the same thing for the next few weeks. Anything else? Go ahead. Um, so kind of the past three games, Skyler's had to be special in different ways. That first half threw a couple touchdowns mm -hmm. the and then seven touchdowns over that two-game stretch. Yep. When the offense is struggling, how much faith do you have in Skyler to put in a special performance? Um, I have a lot of faith, but I, I want him to still play within himself uh, and, and try not to do too much. And I, I think the biggest compliment that I can give Skyler to answer your question is he is playing within the framework of the system because we're not turning it over. If you try to do too much, that's when negative plays happen and all of a sudden you start throwing picks and you start uh, turning it over because you're scrambling around trying to make un 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 uh, plays that aren't there. And that's the thing that excites me the most about Skyler is he's done what we've asked him to do at a really high level, playing exceptional football, uh, but always making good decisions to keep us in good position in a game.